Issue 1, Infrastructure Crack-Up. Question, will the collapse of the Minneapolis Bridge have a catalytic effect on the American people? People have come to expect their infrastructure as an entitlement, just like we've become an entitlement nation in many other respects. The idea is that you should be able to have your bridges and you shouldn't have to pay for them, somebody else should have to pay for them. I had done a post on my blog uh, last week, two weeks ago, about municipal golf courses and the fact that there shouldn't be municipal golf courses because golf courses are not a public good. They're a club good, they're excludable, the people who use them should be the ones who actually pay for them. The same is true to a lesser extent with bridges and infrastructure. When it is feasible to have the people who use infrastructure pay for it, they should pay for it. When you can have a toll bridge, you should. When you can have a toll road, you should. Moreover, I see no reason to assert that a bridge in Minnesota should be an issue of federal taxation and federal expenditure. The people who use the bridge should pay for it. Question, besides Iraq and besides health care, do 08 presidential candidates need an infrastructure plan or can they get away with saying that this is a state and local problem? Look. In the debate, the Republican debate with George Stephanopoulos this past Sunday, Rudy Giuliani, of course, emphasized that as mayor of New York, he had to deal with bridges, which, by the way, is a very disingenuous statement. The mayor has very little say in that. The 08 elections are about Iraq, 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 so they're not going to be about uh, you know bridges to anywhere. It's, it's silly. They'll talk about it. They'll pay at the lip service that they have to pay it. Gas tax to fund highway development makes some sense, it makes more sense than having it just come out of general revenue. If you have a disciplined, what's called a pagu tax, I've blogged about it, many other economists have blogged about it, that truly tries to match externalities and costs with the tax, then it would have my blessing. The devil, of course, as always, is in the details. Next <laughs> question, will the Minneapolis Bridge disaster have the effect of making America more isolationist, meaning less willing to spend money on foreign policy, so demanding on domestic spending, in other words, yes or no? It's a false choice because not every dollar that goes to new spending, now we have to have a war on aging infrastructure apparently, has to come from a dollar somewhere else. We have something in this country called budget deficits, and we are not afraid as an entitlement nation to continue to create budget deficits. We're going to have exploding budget deficits when the fraud of the Social Security Trust Fund comes to fruition. So what's a few more tens of billions or another hundred billion added on to deficits and, and the debt to wage a war on falling bridges? Issue two, U.S. economic pulse. What jumps off that list at you? The list he's referring to is economic data. There's still a disconnect, a fundamental disconnect between what I call Main Street economic indicators, which are still all relatively good, GDP, unemployment, inflation, the stock market, and the Wall Street statistics, things like budget deficits, trade deficits, the state of the dollar, the connector that's going to reconcile those two metrics, I think, is, of course, housing. Not a housing bubble. I've, I blogged long ago, actually, quite extensively about how there isn't a housing bubble. There is a mortgage bubble. I called it well over a year ago, as did others. He had also asked whether there's going to be a recession anytime soon, and I think not, certainly not for the rest of the year. An exit question. Federal Chairman Bernanke testified this week that the overall growth rate for the U.S. economy this year will be around three and three quarters percent. Is he on target? Economic growth, three, three and a half percent. Sure, why not? That sounds about right. The housing market is a, is a significant part of the economy, but the correction in the housing sector is not going to be enough, any kind of contraction in, in the mortgage market, because remember, we don't have a housing bubble. We had a subprime mortgage bubble, which is correcting. That's not going to be enough to drag the economy down. Issue three, General Obama's strike plan. Question, was this an Obama gaffe or was this Obama wisdom? 
Barack Obama is handing the Democratic nomination to Hillary Clinton on a silver platter with these idiocies that he's spewing out. He's also handing some great sound bites to the Republicans. Having said that, Pakistan is, is another one of those trusted allies in the war on terror, but they are an ally. And of course, this is all going, these are all moot questions anyway, because this has already been negotiated and will be renegotiated. If we can find Osama bin Laden in Pakistani territory, we're going to take them out. We already have permission. This has all been wink, wink, nudge, nudge negotiated. I'm confident of that. So the whole hypothetical is, is preposterous. And for Obama to lose points over something that is never going to happen anyway is just so foolish. Next question, starting with Maria, has Hillary struck a knockout blow because of the subject matter, namely the bomb? The question is about the Obama remark about nuclear weapons. That one's a wash. I don't think it was as bad as the other remark about bombing Pakistan. That was the one where he nuked himself in the foot, so to speak. Force prediction, who lost the week? Can I say George Stephanopoulos? He was a disaster hosting that debate on this week. He was completely out of control. He couldn't keep the audience from applauding, which was silly. If I can't say that, I'll say Obama. Bye-bye.